Kayla here, or Callie. I forgot you guys can call me Callie as well. I mean, my name on here is more copy Callie. So yeah, if you wanna call me that, you can. Anyway, hey, welcome to a new video. Today's gonna be a tutorial. I know, I haven't done a tutorial in so freaking long. I've actually missed doing tutorials, kind of. Every time I do tutorials, oh my gosh, I forget how to speak because I have to speak in terms and in a way where you guys will be able to understand because this is something you guys will actually be following along with. So it's like kind of stressful, but kind of great because then it gets, I get to practice and it's, it's fine, it's fine. I love doing tutorials. I love doing crochet with me because I don't have to think about it, but tutorials are definitely my top because I love helping people and teaching people, so yeah anyway i made pants a little while ago and i told you guys i would make a tutorial and a pattern on it i do have a written pattern for these pants and oh my gosh i actually added pictures and like step by step and it's lit literally if you have the written pattern you most likely won't need to watch the tutorial but if you want to if you're a visual learner and you think this tutorial will be better for you, then go ahead and watch this tutorial. I do want to give a, I don't know if I should call it a disclaimer or just like, here's a heads up, okay? This is a measurement based pattern. What does that mean? It means there are no specific stitches that you'll be going into. You don't count your stitches. I mean, you can if you want to, but that's not the point. We go based off measurements here, okay? measurements you measure yourself to get the size that you want it is way easier than it sounds but you won't have to worry about keeping up with stitch count you won't even have to worry about keeping up with row count unless you want to write down what you did so that you can replicate it in the future which is what i do all the time and what else with measurement based i'm gonna insert like everything you need like when i start the tutorial but yeah, I think that's it. This is measurement based. So definitely get yourself a tape measure, a measuring tape, however you say it. And, and let's get started. In this tutorial, you are going to need stitch markers for sure. You can use bobby pins, other hair pins, actual stitch markers, anything that can mark a stitch. You will also need a row counter. This is optional. But if you want to remember exactly what you did, I recommend using this row counter and then writing down everything you did. So if you want to recreate it, then you will be able to know exactly how you did it without having to measure out everything again. Next thing you'll need will be a tapestry needle so that you can weave in your ends. You'll need scissors, any pair will work as long as it can cut yarn. Get a tape measure because we will be measuring throughout this entire pattern. And the last two things you will need will be yarn. This is the yarn I'll be using today, 24-7 cotton by lion brand and i'll be using a size four millimeter hook or a g if that's if you go by the letters and this is also by furls crochet i'll link everything i use down below but for this you don't have to use this exact yarn and this exact hook size you can use acrylic yarn if you want because the method that you'll be using to create these pants will be the same so you can honestly do it with any yarn. I just recommend this yarn because it is very, very nice on the body. And I feel like it doesn't stretch too much so your stitches won't like move out of place. Move out of place, is that the word? It won't stretch to a different size. It will, it will stay the same size the entire time. But if you do choose to use a different yarn, remember to use the hook that is recommended or a hook that you usually use with the, rec the size of the yarn. So let's get started. The first thing we will be working on is the waistband of the pants. So the first thing you'll need to do is make a slip knot. And you're going to chain 11. After this, you're going to work into every single stitch. Of course, you'll skip the first stitch. You don't ever go into that. 
So you'll have 10 total stitches. I'm going to be slip stitching into every single stitch until the end of the row. And if you don't prefer slip stitching, you can always do single crochet or any stitch of your choice, honestly, as long as you have 10 total stitches. Now that you have your first row of slip stitches or whatever stitch that you used, for row two, we're going to work into the back loops only. And you're going to continue working into the back loops only until the ribbing can fit around your waist and your hips. Alrighty, at this point you should have the ribbing finished and I also just want to remind you guys that if it is too, if you find it to be too big, obviously just unravel until it can fit to the size that you want. Now for me, since I do slip stitches, I don't actually make it so it could fit around my waist because if I do, it'll be a little bit too big, especially since with slip stitching it stretches so much so my waist measurement is 32 so I did like 26 inches because when I stretch it out it's going to stretch out to the measurement that I need so if you're like me and you're doing slip stitches definitely do about five inches less than you need so that you don't make it too big if you do make it too big that's an easy fix all you have to do is crochet a long chain and make it a belt and then tie it so that's an option. So don't worry if it's too big. You can always crochet a belt into your project. And I think that's about it. So now you should be at this point. And now we're going to start working in a round. But first we need to connect the two ends together. And I'm going to do that with a slip stitch. So grab both ends of your waistband and then put them together until it kind of fits. If not, you can just stretch it to fit together. So now you're going to slip stitch this together until it is totally connected. It really doesn't matter what stitches you go in to connect this together or how you connect it together when you're slip stitching as long as it's connected because you just need it to be a round because we're going to start working in rounds. Once you have connected this together, you're going to chain one. And now you can open this up and this is what your waistband should look like now that it is connected together. Now we are going to start on the pants part now that the waistband is done. So for round one, you or we, <laughs> We are going to do one half double crochet into every single space. Now, if you have single crochet or half double crochet or double crochet for your waistband ribbing, you're going to do it into every single space and hump that you see. But for slip stitching, you only go into these spaces that you see here, like they're very obvious spaces. Only go into those stitches. If you want to go into others, you can, but I just prefer to go into these obvious spaces here and not anywhere else. Do one half double crochet all the way around, and then when we come back to the seam part, I'll show you how we're going to make sure we have a very straight seam for this entire pant.
Alrighty, we have made it all the way around with our half double crochet. And now we're back to the beginning. Now our first stitch is right here. We're going to slip stitch into that first stitch to join the round together. And you're going to chain one. So this part is the most important part. After you chain one, you're going to turn your work. For me, that means I end up like turning this inside out, but that's fine. Turn your work because if you don't turn your work, your seam will be crooked. <laughs> so after you chain one, turn your work and now we're on row two. Now let me show you what your seam will look like if you do not turn after you chain one. A little bit ago, I made a skirt and I made the mistake of not turning after I chained one I just kept going around and around and around and my seam started turning like this if you can see this is what my seam looks like on this skirt because I didn't turn if you don't mind having a crooked seam then go ahead and keep working in rounds I don't recommend it chaining one and turning after every round is just so much better for the seam okay let me show you what it will look like if you do chain one and turn as you're supposed to. These are pants that I made before this to figure out the pattern for this. And you see how straight my seam is? Oh, this is beautiful. This is what it's supposed to look like, not that S craziness that we saw in the skirt. So if you want your seam to look straight like this, then go ahead and chain one and turn. Okay, I know that's a lot just to say chain one and turn, but I just want to give you examples of what it will look like if you don't, because sometimes you can't really envision. It's like, okay, why am I turning? Like, why do I need to turn after I chain one? You know, I just, I just have those questions myself. And now after experimenting, after experimenting, I realize why you're supposed to chain one and turn. So yeah. Now for round two, this is the part where we are going to start increasing, but we're only going to increase on the edges of our work. And this part will make space for our thighs to fit into our pants. Now, some people will have to increase a lot and some people won't have to increase that much at all. I have to increase quite a lot, but everyone's bodies are different. so. You increase to the amount that you need to, but I'm going to show you how you're going how you're going to increase and where you're going to increase. So for this point, you want to just line up your panel together just like this and make sure it is even. Now you can literally just eyeball it and start as is. Or what I like to do, I like to measure each side after the seam. So there's a seam right here where we connected our panel into a circle. And I like to just start from that point and then go to the edge to measure that part. Then I do the same thing on the other side. Now, this is six inches and this is almost six inches. So I'll just like adjust it a little bit. Just like move it slightly to the left and then measure it again and it is now six inches so let's see if this side is still six inches it is not six inches so i'll just adjust it a little more like you do not you do not have to do this but i like my things to be very precise okay that's good enough for me like i said you do not have to do this you can literally just leave it as is i just want my seam to be right in the middle and if you don't care about where your seam ends up do not worry about this part just go on to this next part that i'm about to show you so once it is even to your liking get your stitch markers if you have any you can, like i said before you can use literally anything but get my stitch markers and I'm going to put it right at the edge. So put your stitch markers at the sides of the pants where it folds. Okay, this is uh, equal enough <laughs> for me. So place your stitch markers in the stitch that is located on the sides of your pants. That is the place where we will be increasing. So 
For row two, you're going to half double crochet all the way around and you're going to increase where your stitch markers are. Already now I have made it to my stitch marker, so I'm going to take that out and increase into this stitch. So that's one and two. And now after you increase, place your stitch marker right back into that second increase stitch. So the last stitch you just did, and that is the place you will increase again. So you want to just remember that place by just marking it so you don't lose it because you don't want to increase at random spots. Now I have made it to the other stitch marker, so I'm going to take that one out and put an increase into this stitch here. So that, of course, it increases two stitches into the same stitch. So that's one and two. I'm going to place my stitch marker into the stitch that I just did. And then half double crochet all the way until I meet up with the seam. All right, I have made it back around the entire panel. So I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch, chain one, and turn my work. So now I am on row three or round three since we're working in rounds. From here on out, you're going to repeat this row and continue increasing every time you get to these stitch markers. And remember to put your stitch markers in every single time. Now, what are you going to increase to? Well, you're going to increase until these can fit around your hips. If you're not using a measuring tape, you can continue increasing and then try these pants on every time you get to a certain point to see if it fits. But an easier way to figure that out would be to use a measuring tape. So take your hips measurement, mine is 42, and you're going to cut that number in half. So instead of using 42 inches, I will be using 21 inches because one side will be 21 inches and the other side will be 21 inches, which will equal 42 inches. So get your hips measurement, cut that in half, and use that number to increase to. Right now, my work is at 11 and a half inches, 12 inches. I'm going to continue increasing at the sides until I reach 21 inches. So if your hips measurement is 30, increase until it's 15. For me, it's 42, I'll increase until it's 21 inches. Okay, so that is what you're going to continue doing. And then I'll come back after I get to the measurements that I need. Alrighty guys, I have finished doing all of the increases that I needed. I needed to go up to 21 inches, which is half of 42, which was my hips measurement. And let me show you, 21 inches total. So after you get to the measurements that you want and need, 
then you can stop increasing. You do not need these stitch markers anymore because you are no longer increasing, so you don't need to worry about these. So I'm just going to take them off since I don't need them. At this point, I do need it to be longer because I need it to go past my crotch area. So I'm going to keep on half double crocheting around until I get to the length that I need. So for you and for me, going to keep on doing the same thing we're doing without increasing. So just half double crochet into each stitch going around and keep on making rows until it falls, until the pants fall past your crotch area. Now, if you want high-waisted pants, like I want high-waisted pants, place your pants against yourself and put it at the place that you want it to meet on your belly and then measure it that way. If it's not past your crotch at that point, keep on making rows. I am back from finishing up my rows and this is just below my crotch which is really really great I'll insert a video or a clip showing you where it ended for me and that's just right around where you would want yours to end we're at the part where we're going to make the crotch part to connect the front and the back parts of this panel so that we can start making the pant legs. Now you're going to want to make this as even as possible so that both your pant legs will come out around the same size. For me, I just like to just adjust it and then I just eyeball it basically to see if it is exactly the same. And this looks pretty good to me if I'm gonna be honest, but if you want to be pretty exact, Definitely grab your handy dandy tape measure and just measure one side. This is about 11 and a half inches and this side is around 11 and a half inches as well. So this is literally perfect. I eyeballed it very well. So now this is how you're going to create the crotch part for your pants. For me, I'm going to finish off this part. So slip stitch. I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch just like that. And now I'm and I am going to chain 10. Now you can start off by chaining 10 and then try on your pants to see if that gives you enough room. If you need it to be longer, definitely chain more than 10. If you find it to be a bit too big, then chain less than 10. But I chain 10 and then I try it on. I see how that feels. And chain 10 feels the best to me. So that is what I'm going to go with. But just know that it may be different for everybody based on the yarn that you use or the size that you are. So when you find out how many chains you need, definitely go ahead and chain that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Now we have done our chain for the crotch area. We're going to pull this panel back and slip stitch to the other side of the panel. So just pull it back a little bit and go into whatever stitch you think. It could be this one or this one. Hmm, which one? I think maybe I'll go with this one. Whichever you think is the center, just go into that one and slip stitch. So that's what I'm going to do slip stitch boom and now we have two sections of our pants so i'm going to turn my work this way because i'm left-handed so <laughs> i need to turn it so that i'm able to work 
around this way. So now that we have slip stitched into this part right here, I'm going to half double crochet all the way around until I meet up on the other side. And I'll show you how you're going to half double crochet into the chain. Okay guys, I have made it to the other side and now it is time for me to half double crochet into this chain that we made for the crotch area. Now, I feel like because I'm left-handed, I had to go around to the other side to be able to do this correctly. But for right-handers, I believe that you will be able to go across the chain immediately after you make the chain. So if that's the case and you had to wait a little bit, sorry, but here is how you crochet across the chain. I like to turn my work sideways so that I can work easily into this chain. So what you're going to do is just like normal. There's nothing really different about what you're going to do. It's just a chain and you're going to just half double crochet into every single chain that you have here. So just go across just like I'm doing here until you reach the other side. I have finished half double crocheting across the chain and this is what it should look like. Now I added a stitch marker here so that I can keep track of my rows, but you totally do not have to keep track of your rows at all unless you want to recreate it another time. Now that I have finished going all the way around and across my chain, I'm just going to keep on working in rounds and that is what you are going to do as well. We're not gonna worry about this side just yet. Just work on one pant leg at a time. So for this, we're going to half double crochet into every single stitch around and around and around, doing the same thing until we reach our knees. And then we're going to go and work on the other side. And I'll show you how you're going to crochet into the other side of the chain so don't worry about rushing to the other side just continue this side or whichever side you're on until the pants leg reaches your knee i got this to the knee length that i wanted i'll show you guys a clip of where it is because you can't really <laughs> see i mean you can see compared to this left side that the right side is much longer but now I am going to start on the left side. We're not done with this, of course, but I do want to work on one leg, stop halfway and then work on the other, and then I'll continue the other one until the end. I just don't want to finish one leg and then I still have a whole other leg here. I don't know if that's, that makes sense. That's just how I like to work. If you want to continue doing this leg, then just fast forward and I'm sure I will show you how to continue. But if you want to do my method, then just continue watching. So now that I have gotten the rows that I needed for this, I'm going to actually cut my yarn off because I am going to attach it to the other side so that I can start on this side. Now I'm gonna flip this upside down because we work like this, okay, from top down. So I'm going to insert my yarn right around the midpoint of these pants. Just find a stitch that's closest to the crotch area and you should be able to start from there. Okay, now that my yarn is attached, I am going to half double crochet all the way around until I meet up to this side over here. And then I will show you how you're going to work into the back part of this chain in the crotch area. If you are right-handed, then fast forward a little bit because I'm pretty sure you'll just start going this way. But if not, uh, ignore what I just said. <laughs> I have made it all the way around. I started over here, I put a stitch marker there so 
I started like this, went all the way around, ended up over here, and now we are at the crotch area. Now this is the chain that went across, if I put it this way. Yeah, so this is the top of the pants. Remember, we chained and it went right through the middle. So turn your project sideways if it didn't if it isn't already sideways. And we're going to work into these lines right here. This is the back of the chain. It doesn't really matter which ones you go into. You can, you can easily see it, but just go into every single one that you see across. Remember, stitch count doesn't matter as long as you have no spaces left. I'm just going to go into this see this space right here it looks so small because it's just like one stitch one line but just go into that and you're going to continue going into those little lines as you work across If you end up picking up more than one line when you go in it, that's totally fine. You just want stitches there so that when you go and crochet around the pants over and over, you'll have actual stitches to go into and not just those spaces. So just put a, put a stitch wherever you see a line until you meet up with the first stitch that you did for this round. I have half double crocheted across the entire back chain and now I have actual stitches. And now I can continue working around. This is my first stitch and this is the pant leg that you'll be working on now because remember, we already did this one. So now it's time to work on this one. So do the same amount of rows that you did for this pant leg. Do it to this pant leg. I did a total of 54 rows, but that's like counting this as well. So I did 54 rows total. So I'm going to do 54 rows total for this as well. But remember, it's not going to be the same for you. You continue until it reaches the top of your knee or mid knee, wherever you want your pants to land. Alrighty, my pants have reached the same length now. So they are both above my knees. I'm not going to show a clip of that because like it looks just like the other one, but just with two pant legs instead of one. So now, let me flip this over so that we can work on this part. Now, this is where the difference between the straight leg and the flared leg comes in. If you're at this point and you want straight leg pants, just continue working like how you have been doing. One half double crochet into every single stitch around and keep going down, down, and down until it reaches the length that you want. If you want capris, stop it when it's short enough. If you want long, long pants, stop it until it reaches your feet, okay? But that is what you'll do if you want straight leg pants. Just keep doing exactly what you were just doing. You don't have to increase, you don't have to decrease, nothing changes. And remember to repeat that on the other side as well so that of course you have even pant legs unless you don't want even pant legs then you know do what you want to do now for the flared leg people like me this is what you are going to do in this row you are going to increase so let me tell you what increases i did and then you can do increases that you want based on the amount of stitches you have, or you could just go with what I what I have because it honestly, honestly doesn't matter. For me, I did four half double crochets and one increase. So I repeated that all the way around. I haven't done it yet, but on my other pants I did. So four half double crochets, one increase. Four half double crochets, one increase. And you're going to repeat that around the entire leg and that's the only row that you're going to increase in. Now, if you want more fold to your flare, then do more increases. But this is what I did, four half double crochets, one increase around the entire row. 
And then that's the only rod that the increase is in. So let me show you what I did. One, and place my stitch marker there because I want to keep track of how many rows I did. So that's one, two, three, four. So that's four stitches. And then now I'm going to do my increase. So one, two, increase. Now I'm going to repeat it. Four half double crochets. So that's one. Hello, birds. Jeez. Two. Three. I keep messing up. <laughs> so three and four and then increase. So you're going to repeat that all the way around and then I'll come back and tell you what we're going to do for the rest of the paint leg. Okay, now that this increase row is done, we are going to just do one half double crochet into every single stitch all the way around. And we're going to continue doing that until we get the length of the pants we need. So this is literally the easy part. This tutorial is basically done because... All you have to do is just keep working in rounds, one half double crochet all the way around until it gets to the length that you want. And remember to repeat it on the other side so that, like I said before, you can have even pants. Now, after I finish this, I will come back and show you how my pants turned out. And I can't wait to see how you guys' pants turn out as well. This is not an outro because I still have to show you stuff. So I'll just see you in the next clip. Okay, okay. <laughs> I made the crotch too, too low. Like it needs to be up like this, but it's okay. Cause it still came out really well. Let me go like that. Boom, bada bop, boom. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun making these pants. They are way bigger than I thought they would be. That's on me, obviously. I will just have to continue practicing. This, this is my second pair of pants that I've made, okay? Like from my brain. So I just need to continue practicing, knowing when to decrease so it can like fit better. And I didn't want it to fit fit, so it's fine how it is. I think I just made the crotch too low, but Anyway, it still came out really, really good. And I think I'm going to attempt and practice on making like tighter pants. And then I'll come out with a tutorial for that. I don't know when that'll be, okay? I'm definitely do a crochet with me before I do a tutorial for that. But anyway, let me know how you guys' pants turned out if you did recreate these pants or create these pants for yourself. I'm excited to see because that, it's just awesome. If you did, and if you have Instagram or Twitter, follow me on there, tag me on there. I will definitely share it. And I just love seeing you guys' creations. It's just awesome. But thank you guys so much for watching and following along. If you want more tutorials and more crochet with me's, almost forgot how to speak English, then definitely hit the like button, subscribe, do all of that stuff where you can get notified and stuff. I don't know. Like, honestly, if you want to subscribe, you'll subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe and you forget, then you just won't. And then you remember later and be like, oh shoot, who is that girl that I watch? I need to find her again. And then you go in your history and you scroll down through all the stuff you watch on YouTube because you stay on YouTube all the time. That's me. Yeah. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time with another video. Bye.